rich disciple of Jesus's had excavated a fresh tomb. His name was jo Joseph of Arimathea. He was a member of the Sanhedrin who, along with Nicodemus, refused to vote for the death sentence imposed on Jesus by the Sanhedrin. Their abstentions drew criticisms, but no sanctions. Jesus had told Joseph not to tell anyone about the tomb because he would need it for Passover. Jesus had told Joseph that the Pharisees would try to further desecrate the day with a pauper's grave with no ceremony. Joseph was in prayer, purifying himself when the Holy Spirit came in a blinding light. He said, it is near time to open the tomb. Go collect Nicodemus to help you bury Jesus. Know that there is no need for you to purify after touching Jesus' body. Your loving act alone will cleanse you for the Sabbath. Joseph was humbled and ran to Nicodemus' house to tell him. Though he was also praying, Nicodemus left immediately for his higher calling. They had no time to buy or mix the herbs. They could only find time to buy the burial linen strips needed to wrap Jesus. Then they hurried to Pilate's mansion. It was five in the evening when the priest complained to the cross guards that the criminals were not dead yet. They argued that the bodies could not be left up because of the Sabbath was starting at dusk. The guards said that it meant nothing to them until their orders were changed in writing. At this time, Pilate was getting ready for his dinner and unavailable to talk to the priests when they arrived. His secretary kept them waiting for a half hour. When Pilate thought to himself that Jesus would cause a riot if it did not listen to them, when he heard it was an easy accomplished request, he signed the order to break the prisoner's legs. A runner was sent with the orders. Minutes after the priest left, Joseph arrived. At minutes after the priest left, Joseph arrived before Pilate could leave the audience room, so he saw them quickly to just be able to get back to his meal. He was startled by the request. They were asking for the body of Jesus to be released to them for burial. Pilate thought this was strange since he had just sent the orders to break the legs of the criminals. He wrote out the orders to release the body and for good measure washed his hands again. He would have to check for spies and his next purge. As Jesus hung by his arms, his lungs could not fill with air. The pressure on his chest and his inability to draw a full breath had allowed edema to collect in the sack that surrounded his heart. This caused further pressure on his heart. Edema is lymph fluid and it's clear. Every beat of his heart was agony and every breath a her Herculean task. He had not been able to talk for hours at this point. The women continued to offer liquids when he glanced their direction. He was very grateful for their intuitive understanding. Jesus asked the one, Is this enough? Can I come home now? The one told him soon, My beloved son, you will be back in our embrace. Just before six in the evening and dusk, many, many things happened. The orders were found by the guards to be in order. The priests arrived with the fruition of their hatred. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus arrived with their burial linens bundled under their arms. The guards had the sledgehammer that drove the spikes, and it also served in this eventuality. The order that the prisoners' legs were broken usually was the order that their crosses had been raised to be fair. The sound of breaking legs was nauseating. When the centurion, the leader of the guards at the cross, raised the sledgehammer for Jesus, his arms lost all their strength. The Holy Spirit had stopped the blow. The voice, a voice that only he could hear, whispered, No, my son, was bloodied, 
but he will not be broken. Do not understand, not understanding how to explain to his fellow guardsmen what he was doing, he dropped the sledge. He then walked past the astounded priest. He bent and picked up his spear. He walked back to Jesus on the cross. His eyes met Jesus for the first time. It was policy not to make eye contact with those you killed to avoid the nightmares. For some reason, his honor as a centurion was calling for him to know this one step. He felt the last benediction Jesus would ever give as a man in the forgiveness of sin. When the centurion reached Jesus' side, though he was Roman, he said, Please forgive me. With a practice thrust from his experience as a young warrior, when he had not been a semi-retired from an injury, he cleanly pierced Jesus' heart. From the wound flowed both blood and water. The centurion retired the next day, never to kill again. Though he had won most of the clothing and the gambling, he walked away with not a single piece. He had cheated at bones, a game like dice, to win them, and it did not seem right to take the winnings now. The Holy Spirit gently lifted.